<laughs> oh, turn it up. Here we go. Up here with your crew, winning all some view. Everything that love stacked right in front of you. Got your icon pass, powder slash it. 50 plus destinations. Speaking of, did you get your icon pass yet, Sean? I'm on iconpass.com dropping in right now. Wow. From just $2.59 adult, everyone knows you get the best price in the spring. Yeah, that's the good stuff. Okay, done. So pass the good stuff. Yeah, it's the good stuff. Woo! This is an important message for anyone diagnosed with cancer after being exposed to Roundup or other weed killers. A California jury recently found Monsanto's weed killer caused a groundkeeper's cancer and issued a verdict for $78 million. More evidence found that Monsanto, the manufacturer of Roundup, may have known that Roundup and other weed killers were likely linked to organ damage and cancer. This information was hidden from the public as proprietary trade secrets since 1981, and Monsanto may have failed to adequately warn about the potential risk of cancer. If you or a loved one was diagnosed with cancer after being exposed to Roundup or other weed killers, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Sentinel Group now. You'll pay nothing unless there's a recovery in your favor. Don't fight it alone. 1-800-619-8064. 1-800-619-8064. That's 1-800-619-8064. 1-800-619-8064. WQEE 99.1 FM, The Key. Home of Southern Sports and Talk. Noonan, Sharpsburg, Franklin. Are you looking for a reliable dental practice that not only cares about your teeth, but is friendly to work with? How about one that offers great deals and new patient promotions? Well, your search is over. Most Valuable Smiles in downtown Eatonton, Georgia, is committed to giving you the biggest and brightest smile. Right now, get a $99 new patient special, including x-rays and exam. Maybe you're looking for veneers. Most Valuable Smiles veneer special includes one free veneer with every five purchased. Or get that bright white smile you've always wanted by taking advantage of an exclusive $100 off Zoom whitening treatment when you book today. And don't forget that 2022 is almost over. That means most insurance policies will reset by the new year, and to avoid losing that extra money, you need to use it or lose it. Book an appointment today with Most Valuable Smiles in downtown Eatonton to lock in these exclusive deals. Call 706-623-0318 or visit mostvaluablesmiles.com. Hank Arnold here from Cowie to Force. Cowie to Force is Noonan's own addiction recovery support center. We exist to provide recovery support services for individuals and family members who have been impacted by addiction. Our services are no cost and all of our information is available on our website at www.cowie force.org or follow us on Facebook. Are you looking for guidance and direction? Stop on by the House of Light Tuesdays from 12 to 3 and have tea and tarot with Christy. The House of Light is located at 29 Jackson Street in Noonan, Georgia. Call 470-414-6711 for more information. The House of Light brings clarity to your soul, offering a safe space for healing through our compassionate practitioners, services, classes, and wisdom, plus the tools to support you in our retail space. This is Jared Rutledge of the Columbus River Dragons, your home for River Dragons hockey in Noonan. The views and opinions of this show and program are not the views and opinions of this station, its management, or its clientele. It's now time for the House of Light presents the Wisdom Cafe. Each and every week at this time on 99.1 FM WQEE. Here's this week's special. Well, hello everybody. This is April Novoa from the House of Light. I'm a human design specialist and a Gene Keys guide. And you know, when I do readings, I typically will inform people about their aura type. People don't always connect with that. We have a lot of conditioning, so they sometimes don't really you know, see that in themselves, but what they almost always see is profile. So I have with me today, Linda, my dear friend, Linda, and we're going to talk about profiles. So there are six lines that are broken into 12 different profiles. Uh, Number one is the investigator, two, the hermit, three, the martyr, four, the networker or uh, opportunist, five, the heretic, and six, the role model. So Linda, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself Uh, and your profile. Hello everyone, I'm Linda. Um, I am a line for one profile, so I'm an opportunist and investigator, um, which plays out in my life in interesting ways. Um, So as a line for networker, opportunist, um, I am definitely a people person, even though I'm an introvert. 
Um, I sort of, I'm very observant of people, I think, and I pay attention to a lot of things that other people don't notice. I connect people in a networking way. Um, Well, the line four is pretty incredible. Um, They are all about their people. They're all about connection and they make connections. They're kind of like how I've gotten to know a lot of people is through Linda because she knows everybody. (laughs) Uh, and that's her conscious profile. So that's the one she's very aware of. But she has a 4-1, which makes her uh, also an investigator. So let's talk a little bit about the line one. The line one is steeped in foundation. Yes. Yeah, so I like to have a foundation of knowledge before I do anything, pretty much. Um So I have a master's degree in psychology, and I feel like I mostly got that so that I could understand myself better. Um, It also helps me understand other people, obviously, which also goes with my line four, which I had never put together till just now. Um, But I also do a lot of reading on different subjects. Um, So like right now, I started getting acupuncture very recently and I'm so fascinated by it and if someone would pay me I would totally go to acupuncture school and not necessarily because I would like to be an acupuncturist but just because I'm so curious about the foundational knowledge that underlies acupuncture and I want to know why it works and how it works all the nuts and bolts yes yes so that line one is very much steeped in uh, wanting to understand the foundation of any of anything and everything doesn't necessarily mean they're going to do it, but they want to know it. And oftentimes they won't make decisions or do anything until they do know it around that thing. So they're all about investigating. And that's the unconscious part of her, but she's conscious of it now. Um, the four is more of how she knows herself. And so she is a 4-1 uh, opportunistic investigator. She Her aura type is that of a manifester, so she brings a little impact Uh, behind that profile so she is making a difference through her networking and impacting the world by connecting people uh, in places and generally she goes where her people are Uh, a line four won't usually move to a new town unless they at least know one person Uh, they may not take a job unless they you know know somebody there or have befriended someone there so it's all about uh, relationship uh, romantic relationships Typically, a line four will want to be friends with a person before they actually uh, have an intimate partnership. So that's the line four. And, of course, the one we talked about with the investigative uh, uh, tendencies. But we also have line two. Uh, Linda and I know quite a few line twos. Uh, That is the hermit. And uh, the hermit is interesting. They kind of need to go off by themselves to kind of integrate the world. And so sometimes they're out, sometimes they're in. Uh, You might have hermit friends. They just kind of go away, and you have to kind of call them and call them back out into the world. Uh, But they're really there to integrate experience. That's the hermit. And then the three, which is what I am, which is the martyr. And that's your mad scientist, the experimenter. They don't need all the details to do anything. Uh, They will jump right into the fire to figure it out. They have to actually do it to understand it. Uh, that's the line three process. And then the four, of course, we talked about. Five is the heretic. And the heretic is interesting because they have a uh, very large projection field, meaning that people don't actually really see them. They see more of a projection of them. And we know some heretics, don't we, Linda? We sure do. Yes. <laughs> that is my unconscious profile. Um, they are here. They're a little bit like the kid in the crowd that notices that the emperor is not wearing any clothes and points it out. And, the her- and that's why they're called heretic. They're kind of a truth seer. And then, of course, the role model. We know a few of those as well. And the role model, uh, they are there primarily, uh, well, to be a role model, you know, to uh, to show us the way. They're, they're on the top tier of uh, what it is to be a leader. So that, and they break into 12 parts. So we have one, three... Uh, which is the investigator martyr, the one four, which is the investigator networker or opportunist. Uh, then we have, what do we have? The two five, which is the hermit uh, heretic. And then we've got the three five, which is the mar- martyr, I'm sorry, which is the, yes, martyr heretic. And then we've got the four one, which is what our dear Linda is here. 
and the four six, which is the opportunist uh, role model, the five one, which is the heretic investigator, the five two heretic uh, hermit, and then what else do we have? What am I missing? The six two role model hermit, and then the six three, which is the role model uh, martyr. The six is interesting though because it has a triphasic life. So for at least most of its life until it hits like 40, uh, I, I shouldn't say it, this person, until <laughs> they hit the age of 40 or so, they are also a three. They don't actually become the role model until they've had a lifetime of experiences to integrate. Then they step into that space later on in life. So profile is very interesting. Um, some famous profiles that come to mind immediately would be David Bowie with his three five. You know, he was, he's one of my favorites and he was certainly an experimenter, certainly tried on a lot of different things and you can see that in his art. So Linda, how does this 4-1 play out in your day-to-day -day life? Um, well, I work at the House of Light, obviously, and um, I'm sort of the office manager there. And so I keep track of what practitioners are coming in when, um, and make appointments and things for them. And so I feel like my line four works really well there because I have to keep track of all these different people and who they're seeing, when they're going to be there, when they're not, um, what they're up to, how their life is going. Um, I try to be as helpful to them as I can be in creating social media content. Mm -hmm. um, and so I feel like in that way... That, or that's one of the ways it really plays Before out for me. Through. Yes. Yeah. And even the line one, like knowing what the practitioners do and how to explain it. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm sort of sitting at the front desk. And so when people come in and they're like, well, what's, what's human design? <laughs> you know, right. um, I think my line one comes in handy there to be able to try to explain to people what our practitioners do. Because I have that foundational knowledge sort of yes um, most definitely you're very well informed uh probably more well informed than most everybody anybody i know but you know your people and you really study them and you understand them i think that's one thing that i felt uh meeting you is that i felt very seen and i felt very understood and i feel like you see very clearly and understand others as well i definitely agree with that um and I feel like I've been that way my whole life um mm -hmm. I've always been a good listener um I've always been a person that people can come to and tell me what's going on with their life I often have strangers telling me what's going on in their lives which <laughs> 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 if I had a nickel for every time someone was like I can't believe I told you that yeah. I would be very very rich yes yeah you do you really read people quite well and then you bring this sort of impact to that. How does the manifesto aura play with the four one? Do you feel like I mean, you can get stuff done? Yes. Yeah, I definitely can. Um, I don't really, I've no, know that I've ever really thought about it that much. Yeah. Um, I mean, I do feel like I impact people's lives, mm -hmm. um, with my presence and maybe that's part of the line four too. Yeah. Uh, I impact them in an understanding way, hopefully. Yes. Um, definitely. So I think that might be kind of how they play together. Well, for those that have not heard this before, and I'll just kind of quickly go through it, there are five aura types. Uh, the manifester, we're sitting here, two manifestors, um, uh, has a closed and, and repelling aura. Uh, this is so that the manifester can accomplish uh, what it needs to. It's a starter. The, the manifester could be compared to the quarterback on the football field. <laughs> We go out, we get the game started, and we go to the bench. That's kind of what manifestors do. They're about impact and starting. Uh, then generators uh, are, I guess, probably 30, 35%. We're 9%. And they have an open and enveloping aura. They take everything in around them, and they're the true masters and builders. And then we have manifesting generators, which is kind of a hybrid between the, ma the manifester and the generator. And these are your natural multitaskers. They look like they might be all over the place, but there is a there is a method to the madness, so to speak. <laughs> and uh, they are creators, and but they change channels very fast. Um, and then we have the projector, which is the natural guide, uh, and they are their numbers are roughly about twenty percent, and they're here really to guide others. They have that penetrating aura. They're able to kind of 
really see into people. And then, of course, we have the reflector, which is 1%. And I think we pretty much have everybody represented at the House of Light. There's there's one of of each or more more than one of each uh, there. Uh, it's interesting uh, when you start to look at human design in terms of how you put together a team and what people are best designed to do. And that's one of the things that I do is I will sit with companies and we will go through different uh, people's strengths and weaknesses based on their aura type. Uh, you know, human design is a personality profiling tool. It definitely has spiritual roots, but it can be used very practically in terms of business. So putting together teams, uh, knowing where strengths and weaknesses and gifts and abilities uh, lie is also very powerful uh, to do. And I, I do see that with it, with uh, the House of Light. I feel like with what Linda does, she's quite perfect and at it because she does make a really good impact and she really knows her people and she does uh, really have a good foundational information about just about everything that she does we've got some manifesting generators there too uh, and i think if am, am i wrong they are two fours mm. one the one you work closest with is a no she's a one a she's one a four two, six. Oh, yeah. yes one four one four so that's almost like mirror opposite but y'all kind of complement each other mm -hmm. can you explain about how maybe the differences you've noticed in working together well it that's an interesting question actually because my line four is conscious for me and her line four is unconscious mm -hmm. and so her line one is conscious so she definitely like i'm the people person i'm the one who knows everything that's going on um and she has a lot of awareness of that too but not in quite the same way mm. but she definitely has the investigative part down so like if there's any sort of problem or anything she always is the first to like jump on google and figure it out wow. um and she's just very um logical too i think mm -hmm. and um can really help out with problems that need to be solved whereas I'm trying to figure it out in more of a people-y way <laughs> she does it in a more knowledge-based way um, um, so I feel like we make a really great team mm -hmm. in that respect um, and we understand each other pretty well I think probably partially because of the we have the same lines even if they're in opposite places it kind of is like a little bit of a mirror image mm-hmm that's really cool. And she's a manifesting generator? Yes. So she's a multitasker. She is a multitasker. And yeah. That's helpful, too. <laughs> that is. The wonderful thing about manifesting generators is they can find, they innovate. They can find yes. better ways of doing things. Uh, generators like to do things one step at a time. They will follow the directions on the box where manifesting generators will go, I think we can skip to line three. Yeah. <laughs> and we, and, and that, that's, it's interesting to understand when you have an understanding of yourself and you have an understanding of the other, there's a lot more harmony and peace and relationships. So, you know, if you want to do human design, it's awesome to understand yourself. Uh, but then, you know, keep going and try to understand the people in your life and you'll find that you interact differently and more peacefully. Like none of us are the same and we all project a reality based on our own experiences and traumas and shadows and uh, all those things. Um, when we understand the other, uh, that that's really advantageous uh, to building um, really good relationships and also team building. So definitely want to keep that in mind. Is there anything else you want to tell us about your design? I know you've got, you're also very empathetic. You have a open solar plexus. Um, so that means that you, 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 has that been helpful understanding that? Yes. Um, yeah, I'm definitely an empath and I pick up other people's emotions, especially, um, and for a long, for a good part of my life, I did not know that I did that. And mm -hmm. so I often feel strong feelings, but they're not always mine. Uh. And so once I learned that, um, it's been really helpful to ask myself when I feel really strong feelings, oh, is this my, like, if I'm like all of a sudden really angry, mm -hmm. um, I'm like, wait, is this mine or is this someone else's that I'm picking up on? Right. And more often than not, it's someone else's. And then I can, like, release it and let it out of my body and then 
be like, okay, who's angry? <laughs> Can right. I help solve this problem? Right. Do I need to help solve this problem? Right. Um, and so it's been really helpful to ask myself that question. And I think a lot of empaths, like we know that we're taking on other people's things, but we don't know how to let it go Just or identify. that we don't have to be responsible for it. Right. Um, right. And human design really helped me figure that out, that I don't have to be responsible for the feelings that other people are feeling. That's so beautiful. You know, that's when you look at your human design body graph, which is what it's called. And if you're wanting to get one, just go to geneticmatrix.com and it's free. You can pull up your design. Uh, Where you see centers, uh, those are all the shapes on the body graph, is where uh, they'll either be colored in or they'll be clear or white. And if that's the case, if they're clear or white, you're taking in outside energy. When it's colored in, that's energy coming from within you. So that's very helpful to understand. The solar plexus is the center for emotion. And Linda, understanding that that is not defined for her, knows that she's subject to uh, taking in the emotions of other people. Uh, You know, so that would technically, you know, from a perspective of human design, that makes you an empath. Um, And then if you have, let's just say the spleen, uh, you know, that is not defined, then you might take in something like people's discomfort. A lot of people in medical careers or alternative health um, or that work with people will often, you know, uh, start to feel what another person's feeling. If I have a sore knee and I sit down next to somebody with an open spleen, they may all of a sudden have some discomfort in their knee. Uh, we are, we take on other people's energy. Um, scientifically, you can, you can detect the aura or the essence of the human being 10 feet around a person. Uh, so when you're next to people, you really are kind of one. You're becoming uh, one. So a lot of what we feel sometimes isn't necessarily ours. It's coming from other people. Uh, it's coming from outside of us. And we tend to react to what we feel. But if we have the understanding that, oh, wait, you know, Susan over there was feeling kind of angry and all of a sudden I'm feeling angry and maybe that's not my anger. That's very liberating. Yes, definitely. Because in human design, probably the most important thing to understand is that the mind is never the authority. And the mind likes to create all kinds of narratives and stories about what it feels. So as we're taking these things in, the mind busily tries to solve the problem. Right. And that was one of the best things for me to realize. So like I'm picking up Susan's anger. And so my mind is trying to tell me a story about why I'm angry. So I'm like, oh, well, maybe I'm angry at my mother. Yes. You know, but really it's not even my anger. And so once I ask myself, is this mine? And, and I get the answer of no, I can let it go. And then my mind isn't trying to make up stories anymore. But if I'm unaware that I'm picking up other people's emotions and that, and I think it's mine, my mind will try to tell me why I'm feeling this way. Well, we just, we just accomplish world peace (laughs) (laughs) because that's what it is, right? We're conditioned by our environment. Uh, We tend to misinterpret the sensations we feel in our environment as original thought or original opinions uh, when in fact most of it is coming from outside of us. So if we can kind of disidentify with some of our feelings and really question where did that come from, why am I feeling that way, why am I struggling with this, it's very, very skillful and impactful in our own lives and the lives of others to really notice. the other thing we have in human design is authority, strategy and authority. That's found in your type. As manifestors, we're here to impact, but we do that through informing, meaning that anyone that might be affected by our impact is, you know, informed. We're, we're told what we tell them what we're going to be doing. Uh, the generator needs to wait to respond. Forcing is not for them. Generally doesn't work out. Similar, the manifesting generator, wait to respond and then, you know, initiate and inform while you're initiating. Uh, The projector, waiting for the invitation. The reflector, waiting a good moon cycle, right? Giving it a lot of time to make those decisions. So, you know, human design in essence is a navigational tool and a deconditioning tool. And when I see deconditioning, what I mean is 
all of the things about you that you've taken on to be you from the time that you're born that might not necessarily be yours start to fall away. Have you found, what has what your deconditioning process been like as you use your strategy and authority? Have you noticed, have you noticed changes in terms of how you see yourself? Yes. Um, sorry, I'm just, pretty general. To, I'm just trying to think of like how to describe that. Um, I've definitely come come to a more oh god, I don't know if I have the words. Um, come to a place of being able to feel my true self mm-hmm. more fully, mm-hmm. um, and human design has definitely helped with that. And um, you know, like even the solar plexus thing, like realizing mm. I'm picking up other people's emotions and have been since the time I was young. And I think this brings it back to the profile line. I'm a line four, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, networker, I want to make sure all of my people are okay and doing well. Yes. And so growing up, a big thing for me was I would feel other people's emotions And feel like I had to be the one to Mm. fix it and make it better. Yes. Um, Which is, I think, another reason I studied psychology. Um, Yes. And so, you know, learning human design helped me to really realize, like, that I don't... It's not my responsibility to hold other people's emotions to fix them. I can be there for people Mm -hmm. and hold space for them and also not have to fix it. Because obviously we can't fix things for other people right. anyway. Right. And, uh, which that was a big lesson for me too, that like really the only thing I can do is hold space for you and be understanding and loving and yes. allow you to feel your own feelings. Yes. Um, and st- because it's so much easier in many ways to just take their feelings for them Yes, and I'll deal with them. But then that means I'm struggling and burnt out. Right. Um, and so, That's been a helpful thing to learn. I'm not responsible. Um, I can be with you, Mm -hmm. but I don't, I'm not responsible. That's beautiful. So there's a lot of, I want people to understand where you have openness, you have amplification. So a person that um, has openness in a certain area will feel that sensation greater. So there's an impetus on the part of somebody that is undefined in their solar plexus to want everybody to be to feel better so they can feel better yeah so right because if you're sad at a level three i feel it at probably a level six right you're feeling it much stronger than the person who's actually feeling it and 50 percent of you are undefined in your solar plexus so again if you want to know what your design is and go down this rabbit hole (laughs) uh, you can contact me at the house of light or you can just go to geneticmatrix.com And I am there every other Friday from 10 to 3 to do many human design readings just to get you started, just to initiate you into your experiment. So um, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, yeah, just just go to geneticmatrix.com, get your design, get this journey started. (laughs) You've been listening to The House of Light Presents. The Wisdom Cafe on 99.1 FM WQEE. The House of Light, a wellness center at 29 Jackson Street here in Noonan, is a place for people to relax and find true healing. For additional information, 407-414-6711. Remember to tune in next week for another healing message from the House of Light Presents The Wisdom Cafe right here on 99.1 FM WQEE.